Hello and welcome to our interior lighting quick start video for V-Ray for SketchUp. In this video, we'll go over lighting an interior scene using V-Ray for SketchUp that builds on our previous lighting quick start video on exterior lighting, which you may want to check out if you haven't already. Here we are in SketchUp Pro 2017 and we have the scene file interior lighting start.skp loaded which you'll find in the downloaded assets from the link shown below. Start an interactive render and you'll notice that I have a material override already set in the scene except for the glass to allow light to come in from the outside. Now let's take a look at that. In the asset editor under the materials select the glass material and open the settings and in the options rollout, you can see that the option can be overridden is turned off. So it does not respond to the material override set in the render settings. Adjust the time of day so that we get light through this back window. In the settings tab of the asset editor, adjust the camera's exposure value to increase the light taken in to brighten the image. Lower values increase sensitivity to light. Set the EV to 9. When you're satisfied, stop the interactive render. I'm going to create some additional light in the scene. Click to create a plane light and place it and scale it like so in front of the window. Now go ahead and copy this light and then place it outside of this sliding glass door, sizing it roughly to the door scale. This exterior light will send light through the glass door into the room, while the other one inside will soon make into a portal light to facilitate the existing sunlight to come through from the outside environment. Set the view to render view 00 and kick off an interactive render. We have a giant square of light in the scene, not quite something you see in real life. In the asset editor, lights section, we see this rectangle light. Change its color to see how it changes the illumination inside the room. Now, in the options, change this to a portal light. And the render updates to fill the room with a much more natural look of light coming in from the outside. Now, there are two types of portal lights. Regular portal light that I'm using here, and simple portal light. The simple type ignores all the objects behind it, effectively cutting a hole to let light in from your environment while the regular portal light samples all the objects behind it, including solid objects and those with transparent or translucent materials. If you compare the simple portal light render to the previous regular portal light, you can easily see how the curtains are affecting the light coming into the room, as well as slightly less illuminated overall. The simple portal is faster, but the regular portal looks more accurate. We'll stay with the simple portal. Now that we have a baseline look for the lighting, turn off the material override and watch the interactive render to see the lighting with the proper materials in the scene. Now let's launch a production render. Turn off interactive and progressive in the asset editor and set quality to very high. And I'll set my resolution to 1280 by 720 and feel free to set your resolution and quality level to your system's comfort level as this high quality HD render will take some time to process. Click render. Now you can continue on to the next steps with your own render or you can load the finished image as we have it. In the VFB, click the Load Image icon and navigate to ILDAY01 in the downloaded assets to load this render instead of waiting for your own. And after elapsing just over an hour's worth of rendering, we have a striking image of this space. In the VFB, in the lower left hand corner, enable Show Corrections Control and also turn on force color clamping to show where we're blown out. Enable exposure and set the highlight burn to about 0.5, although be careful not to get too low as that can flatten out your image. To me, 0.75 seems to be a good setting so the overbright areas are not so pronounced. Enable white balance 
and find a good temperature to suit your taste. Of course, the hue saturation controls give you color and lightness control on the image, while color balance has a more sophisticated way to control the color in the image. So have a go with these controls to find a good color balance to your taste. Now, curve control is a great way to adjust the contrast levels in your scene by using the shape of the curve like I'm doing here. Click Open Lens Effect Settings here. We will turn on Bloom for a more photographic response to the light in the far window. I'll reshape this bloom and make it smaller so it's not so obvious like you see here. Weight controls how much the bloom essentially affects the entire image, so I'll set this to a very subtle level to give us just a hint of bloom. At this point, save your own render with the Save icon, and we'll move into making a nighttime scene. Save your scene as well, as we're going to be changing it. Turn on Interactive and lower your resolution for faster test rendering. Then, turn on Material Overrides and start an interactive render. In the Asset Editor, Lights section, disable the sunlight. In the Settings tab, under the Environment rollout, turn off the background map and see how much light we lose inside. Increase the background value to 2 and set a color you prefer for a nighttime sky. I'll elapse about 20 seconds here for this result. Now stop your render and now let's get artificial lights inside. Adding a light to a component will add that light to all the components. So select the pendant light here and then click Spotlight in the toolbar and place it at the center of this pendant light. As if by computer magic, the spotlight appears on all the pendants. Select one of the spotlights to select them all and lower them away from the pendant just a little bit. Then right click and choose Close Component and then Close Group. I also want to add a couple of IES lights to the room, so navigate to this corner where the bookshelf lives. Click the IES light icon in the toolbar and navigate to the 10.IES file in the downloaded assets for this tutorial. Click to place the IES light here, and then make a copy of it for this side as well. These IES lights will give us a really nice look in this corner. Now navigate out to a wider view so we can get to the kitchen. Click on the sphere light in the toolbar and place it here in the kitchen for a general lighting coming from this part of the house. Switch to the render view 00 again and start an interactive render so we can start making individual adjustments. In the Asset Editor's Light section, select the V-Ray Spotlight and disable it. Click the Render Region icon in the VFB and draw a box around this area. I'll use my mouse wheel to zoom into the image, though I'd like it to be a bit brighter so my old man eyes can see the book on the shelf. Select the IES light to make adjustments. Now, since IES profiles have brightness information built in, click Override Intensity and set Intensity to 4000 to manually make those lights a bit brighter than before. Now define this region of the image to work on with the incidental kitchen light. Give the sphere light a little warmth to the color and boost the intensity to 100. Widen your render region a little bit and then select the spotlight and enable it. Open the options rollout, change decay to inverse square to more accurately show lights decay over distance and set penumbra fall off to smooth cubic and our scene gets quite a bit dimmer. We need to change our intensity quite a bit to account for the natural decay of the light. First, set the units to radiant power and that gets us too bright at 30. Lower the intensity to 8. Expand the angles rollout and increase the cone angle to 1.8 for a wider spread. The penumbra angle softens the edges of the spot, so I'll set mine to 0.8 for a more natural look. Test a few regions here and there to see the pendant light contributions to the entire scene. Here on this chair, notice that the shadows are quite sharp, so change the shadow radius to 1 to add a little bit of softness to them. 
When you're satisfied, turn off Region Render in the VFB to update the whole image. Set an amber tone to the spotlight in its color parameter and you'll see that a little color goes a long way. So I'm going to back off my saturation quite a bit for a nice incandescent look to these lights. I'll do the same to reduce the saturation of my kitchen sphere light as well. Now since this is a general light in a corner that we don't see directly, Using an unmotivated light without a fixture like this can make sense. Now, I'm satisfied with this lighting, so I'll stop the render and set my resolution back up to 1280 by 720. Turn off interactive and progressive, set the quality to high, and turn off the material override. Click render, and after about 35 minutes of elapsed time, we have a fantastic quality interior rendering. Now, you can use your own render or in the VFB, click Load Image and navigate to IL Night 01 in the downloaded assets to load this render to make finishing adjustments. Click Show Corrections Control here in the VFB to open the color adjustments that are available. Start by adjusting exposure as you see fit. I'll adjust the white balance a little bit and then adjust the richness of my colors with saturation and then add a little punch with some finishing in color balance to find the right look. Lastly, I'll make a slight curve like this to punch up the tones in the render for a little more impact. When you're happy with your own corrections, right click on the VFB background here and select black for the background. Click on the globals bar and you'll be able to save your color corrections to disk. Let's load a sample we made for you after you save your own. Just click load and select the file nightcc one from the downloaded assets. Load the nightcc two file for a warmer, more contrasty interpretation of this render. Close the corrections control and click open lens effect settings icon in the VFB so we can add some lens bloom and glare. Enable bloom effect and use shape, size, and weight sliders to find a nice looking light bloom. Then turn on the glare effect and set the type to glare type from camera parameters. Set the weight to about 11.3 and then notice how nicely these pod lights look. Now we didn't add these pod lights as traditional lights in this video. They're using emissive materials to create light. Now we'll talk about that in future videos. Now you can save your render and put it on the fridge for everybody to see. Thank you for joining us for this quick start video introducing interior lighting workflows in V-Ray for SketchUp.